Hey everyone, it's Neil Patel, and today is another day of SEO Unlocked. Today is one of my favorite days because we cover Google Search Console. If you haven't used Search Console, make sure you go to Google Search Console. You can just Google it. And once you go there, it breaks down step by step on how to set it up. And once you're set up, the first thing I want you to do is go and check out your crawl errors report. Now, if you already have Google Search Console set up, you'll start seeing data right away. If you don't, it may take a day or two or a few days to start seeing data. They crawl your website and they tell you if there's any important errors that their crawler, right? This is Google's algorithm. They have their own crawler that crawls the web that they see within your website. You wanna fix these errors because it'll help you improve your rankings. Because the moment Google says, hey, there's something wrong with your website and you don't fix it, then they're like, well, if you're gonna continually show stuff that's wrong with your website, it's probably gonna be a poor experience for users, so we shouldn't rank you as high. And when you look at your crawl errors report, it'll tell you what pages there's issues, and it breaks it down step-by-step step on how to fix it. And once you fix them, you wanna click validate fix because that tells Google, hey, I fixed it. You should come back to my website, crawl again, and then double check because if everything's good, make sure this page is ranking high, everyone can see it, and they usually validate it. Sometimes it can take up to a week, sometimes two weeks, but they're pretty quick about it. And if you wanna speed up how quickly they recrawl your website, in Google Search Console, you'll see a bar at the top. Anytime you put your URL in there, you can tell Google, hey, crawl my website and submit it. And it'll tell them right now or within the next hour, we should go back to your website and crawl it instead of waiting and taking our time. In most cases, Google will be able to crawl your website and you shouldn't have issues. I don't even see this issue 1% of the time. It's very negligible. But I want to break this down because some of you may be struggling to be like, hey, Google Search Console isn't able to crawl our websites. And it's usually because it's related to some sort of uh, server error like Google can't get a hold of your server or it goes too slow or your server times out. And I won't go through these in depth. There's just a ton of them. But again, it's very unlikely that you're going to have to deal with any of these issues. I just wanted to put them here on the screen so you can see in case you were in that, you know, fraction of a percent of people are having issues of Google Search Console crawling your website. When they crawl your website, in most cases with the errors that they show, most of them are gonna be 404 related. And that's what we tend to see with a lot of our clients. And I wanna go over 404 errors because a lot of people freak out with them and some are really bad and you should freak out, but most of the 404 errors that we see aren't too bad. And the reason being is a lot of times it's just typos or people linking to a page that never existed. And when I say people linking, it's usually like scrapers and bots linking to pages that never existed on your website. So you don't have to worry too much. But let's go over each of the main 404 errors that you could be getting and which ones you need to fix. So the first thing you need to do is look at, hey, is there a page on your website that you deleted? If there's a page on your website that you deleted that had a lot of links, people are going to it, you may want to 301 redirect that. If it's just a bad URL generated by a script or never existed, it's usually not a problem that you need to worry about. So what I want you to do is go to your website and look to see if you're linking to any dead pages because Google will show you the 404 errors and go to those pages and just say, hey, is there any other page on my website linking to it? And if there are, remove them because they shouldn't be there. If there's misspelled links coming to your website and someone linked to the wrong URL, just make sure you 301 redirect those to the right URL so that way it helps your rankings. The most errors, like I said, are typically like just bots putting in random URLs into your website and somehow Google finds them. So for those, just ignore them and you don't really need to fix most of them. But the ones where it's a link pointing to a wrong URL or you had a page and then you deleted it or you're linking to a page that never really existed. Those kind of 404 errors you need to fix. Next, I want you to submit your sitemap into Google Search Console. If you don't have a sitemap, you can use the Yoast SEO plugin or Rank Math or you can just Google XML sitemap generator and there's a lot of free tools out there that'll help you generate a sitemap and then you go click on sitemaps within Google Search Console 
and then you submit it. It walks you through how to do it step by step. Typically, the sitemap URL on your site is going to be yourdomain.com slash sitemap.xml. As I mentioned, there's a ton of free tools like xml-sitemaps.com. It's a place where you can go to generate sitemaps. Then you need to look at your internal links on your website. Make sure that, hey, these are the top link pages that you're linking to internally. They should be the ones that are important to you. Uh, you also want to look at the top link pages that other people are linking to you because you want to see if that aligns with what you're linking to and what other people are linking to you because there could be a disconnect, right? Remember the musketeer framework that we broke down many modules ago? I believe that was in week two. You want to end up looking to make sure that you're optimizing for the pages that not just you feels most important, but your musketeer also feels important as well. As I mentioned, Google Search Console also shows you who else is linking to you. This is great because you can build relationships with these websites, hit them up and try to get them to link more to you, which could, you know, it's not just about SEO, but it's also about driving referral traffic, which can drive sales as well. You also want to make sure that you're using breadcrumbs and schema markup. Uh, here's an example of a URL that isn't using schema and breadcrumbs. And then after they do, you can see it's clean Google, you know, right arrow about right arrow company, right arrow history. It's so much cleaner. These little things really help when it comes to increasing your search traffic. If you don't know how to do it, no worries. There's plugins for this. There's a breadcrumb nav XT. Um, there's also the schema all in one schema rich snippets. If you're also using the Yoast SEO plugin or rank math plugin for WordPress, they do a lot of this as well. And if you want to ensure that your site is crawled quickly by Google, every time you make edits, such as adding breadcrumbs or adding schema, again, you can submit your URL in that search bar within Google search console, type it in there, and then Google will crawl your website really quickly, usually right away or within an hour, instead of taking days and days. I also recommend that you use accelerated mobile pages. In countries like the United States, it doesn't help increase traffic by much, but in regions like Brazil and India, we've seen that it increases traffic, at least from mobile devices, because a lot of these regions don't have um, as fast internet connection as, you know, maybe Australia or Canada. So it's really important that you're leveraging accelerated mobile pages. There's also a plugin that does this. You can just go into WordPress and download the AMP plugin and it'll just set everything up for you. So then that way your website is AMP compatible. And what it does is just take your URL string. Like let's say if it's your site.com slash blog post name, it usually just adds slash AMP at the end. And then Google will index these for everyone on mobile devices. And you can go within search console and see how your AMP pages are being indexed. You just have to click on AMP and it'll show you a breakdown. And it also breaks down. This is what's really important is if there's any issues. And I've had issues before with my AMP pages because sometimes plugins get updated or something gets broken and Google notifies me of it. So I know, Hey, go look for a solution or go look for another plugin or go update the plugin to the latest version. The next plugin I want you to use is a lazy load plugin. When you view a web page and a page has a hundred images or 20 images or 10 images, you're not viewing them all at once. You're scrolling. And as you're scrolling, you're seeing more images. So why can't the page load quicker and load the images as you're scrolling? So that way it optimizes the experience for you. And that's what the lazy load plugin does. In addition to that, which in your Google search console, I want you to check for security issues. If your site has been hacked or you have security issues, you'll find really quickly that your rankings will quickly disappear or tank. So this is important that you pay attention to the security issues. Now what I want you to do is install schema markup as well as AMP and lazy load by doing all three of those things. Not only will your site load fast, you'll create a better user experience for people searching Google. This will all help you get loved by Google. 